Hello everyone, this is Jeff, your PSN FFL Commissioner, here with a video to discuss filtering slash player blocking slash player cycling. I know what you're thinking, yes, you're discussing this again, yes I am, because we had some issues with this last year, I didn't think we would, but we did. So, I'm here again to discuss this and go more into depth. Now, I'm not the type of guy that tries to blame people or point fingers, but, you, you know, who knows, maybe I didn't explain it well enough, maybe I wasn't clear. But this year, I'm going to make sure of that. I make this as clear and simple as possible. So there you have the definition, filtering a player blocking. Exact same slide from last year, okay? You know what not to do. And of course, here is the example of what not to do, okay? You see it right here. We are stressing throughout the league, which is why we spend so much time talking about this, to not do it. I can't make this any more clear. So let's go over the rules here. If you pick up a player you must possess that player for at least one game. Unless, of course, there's an injury, suspension, or some other weird circumstance. You don't necessarily have to use or start that player, but you do need to keep the player for at least one game. If you pick up a player and then drop that player before he even plays a game, that is filtering, that is player blocking, that is illegal, and that will get disciplined. I want to make sure that is clear. Okay, so take a look at that. All right? All right, so let's talk about some examples here. Let's just assume the games take place on Sundays, right? So let's say you pick up a player on Friday and you drop him on a Monday. That's fine because he would have played his game on Sunday. Let's say you pick up a player on Tuesday and you drop him on Saturday. That is not okay because he hasn't played at least his one game. Okay, unless of course he's injured or suspended or something like that. So notice here it's not just about the amount of time but also the timing. Okay, the whole factor in this is the player needs to play his one game. Okay, keep that in mind. All right, so how to avoid filtering or play a blocking, of course, Here's the list. This, this came off of last year's slideshow. So take a look at that. This is most of the basic stuff that you already know. Use your claims wisely. Pick up players that you want. Don't worry too much about other teams, okay? And of course, you also know this part, the possible discipline, which unfortunately we had to see some of this last year. I really hope we don't have to go through this again this year. So we'll see what happens. All right, so now we're at the important part of the video. For those of you who have already noticed, among the series of activities, I have posted the filtering player blocking quiz. Now the quiz is not mandatory for anyone, you don't have to do it. However, it is mandatory for the two teams that violated the rules last season. You guys know who you are, at least I hope you do. I don't want to say your name or humiliate you in front of everyone, unless you'd leave me no choice and I have to. For the two teams that violated the rules last season, I need you to complete and pass this quiz and send me the answers in a private message by that deadline of August 20th, 2017. If I do not receive the answers by that deadline, a move limit penalty will be assessed to your teams for this upcoming season, okay? I need your answers by that deadline. August 21st is too late, all right? So if you have any questions, and I have a feeling I'm going to get some here, please feel free to contact me. I'm always here for you guys. Feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to answer and explain anything and everything for you. Thanks again for watching. I will see you next time.